Welcome to this first video in this tutorial series on the basic rules for reasoning with probabilities. In part one, we'll be looking at some important preliminary concepts that we'll want to have under our belts before getting into the rules themselves. In this video, I want to talk about what sorts of things can have probabilities. I know we did a whole course on philosophical interpretations of the probability concept, but in applications, you generally see one of two different languages used to talk about probabilities what I'll call a proposition language and an event language. These are basically different ways of saying the same thing, but it'll be helpful to know how to translate back and forth between them. Let's say I toss a coin, and I ask, what's the probability that the coin will land heads? Grammatically, what I'm attributing the probability to is this statement, that the coin will land heads. And the question we're asking is, what is the probability that this proposition, this statement, is true? say that the probability of heads is 0.5, we're using the language of propositions. We're interpreting H as the proposition that the coin will land heads. And we read the answer as saying that it's 50% likely that this proposition is true. Now we can also ask the question this way. What is the probability of the coin landing heads? The grammar is subtly different. Here the probability is being associated with an event. The event of the coin landing heads. What's the difference? A proposition is a linguistic entity that asserts a claim that can be either true or false. An event is not a linguistic entity, and events don't assert anything. They aren't the sort of thing that can be true or false. An event is a state of affairs in the world that either happens or doesn't happen. So in the event language, we interpret the probability of heads as 0.5 as asserting that the probability of an event occurring, the event of the coin landing heads, is 0.5. For the most part, you can think of these as just two different ways of saying the same thing. So why do we have these two different languages? Well, the proposition language is most natural when we're talking about what beliefs can be inferred on the basis of what evidence, or how likely it is that the conclusion of an argument is true given the premises. This is the domain of inductive logic, so you're more likely to see this language in a logic text. Also, the proposition language might be more natural under certain interpretations of the probability concept than others. For example, statements about subjective probability, where probabilities are associated with degrees of belief, are more natural in the proposition language than in the event language. On the other hand, the event language is more commonly encountered in statistics and probability theory textbooks, and it's often the more natural language when talking about statistical analysis of data. It's also more natural when we're using, say, the frequency interpretation of probability, since frequencies are usually defined in terms of ratios of events. The main point here is just that you'll encounter both ways of talking about probabilities, and in most cases you can convert back and forth between them. The mathematical rules are applied the same either way. It's just a matter of how you interpret the language. So the value of knowing both languages is similar to the value of knowing both languages in any bilingual community. You want to be able to understand both languages so you can understand the conversations that people are having. What you want to avoid is thinking that there's only one right way to talk about probabilities because A, it's just false, and B, it'll get in the way of a productive dialogue between people in each camp. 